Hey guys, I got my Chick Flick Teal watch out. You know what that means? You know what time it is? That means it's time to get out my Coveter's protection device. Yeah, stay back because this time, this episode, you are going to be coveting what's happening here because I am going to take a Michael Breedlove MGB Guitars license plate body kit. I'm going to get a neck and I'm going to take one of my very limited supply of Mississippi license plates, uh, 1932 truck, 1932 car, 56, a bunch of them say house on it. Anyway, stay back, stay back. We're just warming up now, that's nothing. Anyway, we are going to put a bunch of relic wood and stuff that has special meaning on this thing. And it's going to be the coolest thing you ever saw. So, I'm going to start to finish this one. And I'm going to show you how to build this. And uh, I'll leave you coveting how to get this stuff that's going to be on this thing. This is going to be utterly and completely disamazing. So, let's hit the bench right away after you give me a like. I'm going to know if you didn't give me a like and I'm going to be down there to your cable company telling them hey you know what you need to cut their cable or internet or however you get me on whatever device you're using give me a like subscribe and let's hit the bench All right, now. guys we're going to run through some of the parts on this project and you blues historians are going to be able to figure this out right away and then you're going to get coveting really badly I guarantee you but Here's some of the stuff we're going to use. I'm going to start off with an MGB license plate frame kit. Um, it comes in parts with the top and back. It, it's nice because it has this. Let me see how the camera angle is doing here. Yeah, it's got this inset for a license plate right here. And these tabs that you would use uh, to put a... Um, a license plate fix what am, what am I trying to say here so I'm to put the bolts in let's just go with that listen I've done license plate guitar videos before uh, about this I'm gonna give you a link to one right up there right about now and that way you'll be able to walk through this but we've got a 1972 Panola County Mississippi license plate that will drop right into there like so we've got this chrome tailpiece kind of works like a trapeze in a way that's pretty good got that that'll sit back there like so I've got this roller bridge that will mount and you've seen me do episodes about floating bridges on my guitars. I've gotten off into arch top land for a while, but there's one of those videos right about here about how to mount one of these right here and how to set up the scale to do that. So we'll use this right about here. I know it's going to end up being right about here. I like these. Um, we're going to use some low profile stuff um, like one of these low profile pickups that will sit right up in this area right here once we get everything figured out. Um, we used a low profile pickup uh, on let me let me zoom in there. If you look real close Gallia's got one of my guitars that one right there with a low profile pickup on this album which you need to have. This is on vinyl. It's also on CD. Let me pop this back out. Um, but the second song on that album is Esperito Papago and is played on one of my guitars. I'm real happy about that. Anyway, back to this. We're going to have to be concerned with where the neck is here, how high up it's going to be, and how everything will clear here. So that pickup and that roller, we've got the parts here to put the thumb screws in. And I like this tailpiece. A um, little bit of trim is going to go on this thing. we got a Prince Hall emblem going to be somewhere. i got this Pontiac Catalina emblem. 
I got this straight out of GMC Aztec Gold Metallic Paint. You're going to see that pop up. Um, when it gets to the neck, I've got this is going to be the first six string license plate guitar I built. I got this neck here, it's got a truss rod in it. All the uh, tuners are on one side here, that's new for me. We're going to go ahead and cover this up with matchbooks that are apropos, but anyway, that'll sit up here. Like so, I got so much stuff in the background, but you kind of get the idea here. And uh, I got a nice set of Fender inline tuners, so we're not going with junk on this guitar. This thing's going to be fixed up nice. Um, the neck here, we're going to put a good piece of hardwood under here. I've got the 45 made up already, so I'm going to put that on there and then work that and sand it down. But we're going to have to do some work inside the box here, and we'll get that. A lot of sanding and forming and all that kind of stuff. What else do we got? Oh, I got this. Remember the, not the match, but we'll call it the paper stock of the project. A little bit of gleam off there. I don't want you recognizing this too much, but this is a Stuckey's Texaco somewhere in Mississippi. Somewhere in Mississippi. I don't know what all that means. Let me go the other way here. Somewhere in Mississippi. Maybe that's got something to do with it. I'm not sure. Anyway. We're going to put all this stuff together. Paint it up and make a nice uh, instrument. And then we're going to start doing some relic wood. Look at this. I don't know where this come from. But one of the things I did notice almost immediately is me being a tree guy. I notice that there, when wood dries out and start, starts having saprophytic fungi. I want you to look at that right there. I'm going to have to get a pointer out, I think. This is, I'm going to have to identify the genus and species of this because if you look right there and all out through there, look at there too. If that is not chick flick teal, I don't know what is. You see that little spot right there? You see chick flick teal? Yeah, the planets are lining up on this one. So, I may let you in on this as I go. I'm not sure who it's going to go to or what it's all about, but I will catch up with you guys along the way. All right, let's take a look at what I'm doing with the neck here. I am going to run the neck into the box and um, I'm going to need to beef this up because I don't want to really bolt anything to the box. So this is going to go through. I'm also going to have the tailpiece end inside the box so I can use the trapeze that I showed you. And, uh, and so what I've done is I've got this piece of hardwood here and I've marked it off. I'm going to bring it up to here. I put the 45 in it as you can see. And I'm going to glue this on. This is just simply tight bond out of a glue bot. I love these things. I've told you about them before. You just squeeze this. The glue comes out. And then as soon as you let it go, the glue sucks back down in. These things are awesome. Glue bot. G-L-U-B-O-T. Grab one of those. I, if I remember, I'll give you a link to where to buy that down below. Anyway. So I put the glue on here. I've done some shaping here to get things okay. I'm going to have to work on this later. Now, when I clamp this, I'm going to want to remember that I've already got my frets here. So I'm going to take a piece of Patron box, which is great wood for projects. I don't use them for my cigar boxes. I Guitars, I use Camacho boxes because they're pretty tough to send out on the road with people like Gallia Volt. Anyway, let's move the camera here and we're going to clamp this up. All right, I've glued this up. You want to remember that when you're doing this, it's going to kind of walk around while you are gluing. You don't want to make sure that it's right, that you don't come back later and find out that everything is messed up. I always leave a little bit of wood shining over the edges of this and my final shaping will happen after this is all glued together. 
Um, you know that I've told you about in an episode called Strengthening the Heel of Your Neck, going back to Cigar Box, there's an episode right up there that I talk about. This is a break point, just like up there on your scarf joint right here. And you know that I tend to put in dowels, not Fred McDowell's, but just regular dowels that run perpendicular to how these surfaces are mated up. So I would put dowels in here. This is also a good place and it's wide enough to put some kind of a coin or emblem or something there. But I'll typically make the dowels out of relic wood that are significant to this guitar and its theme. All right, next I've got this box kit um, mocked up where everything is going to lay out for me and I know where things are going to fit and it will actually work. Um, this box is pretty big. This kit is pretty big um, in comparison to some of the other kits or builds that people do. You'll notice the body is relatively uh, much bigger than the one you see here. This is a different kit I use, but this one barely fits a license plate. Uh, this kit leaves you drilling holes in the license plate and uh, and some stuff and it starts getting into bigger bodied guitars with pickups and things and six strings and stuff. I actually like um, this kit because when I start getting stuff out of the way here, thanks for bearing with me. Um, but when I pull this plate off of here, you'll see that several different pieces and down in this area right here your potentiometers drop right in here so you don't have to try and drill through the plate here somewhere and believe me on some of the smaller bodied stuff when you start putting on roller bridges and tail pieces and this kind of stuff you can see that there's not a lot of room down in here and when you start moving your uh, controls and potentiometers and knobs up into here and you're strumming you're going to end up getting those out of the way or up here they're just uncomfortable this way these holes are right here they don't interfere with anything plus the body weighs a tad more so you don't get so much neck dive and all that kind of thing but again it just sits there I like it that there's tabs right there I usually put insets in that have screws and then the license plate bolt that holds that those are embedded in there so they never break off but you've got this this and this and then of course the bottom now i'm going to glue these together i know it'll work notice that i had some marks on the top here that capture the radius of the guitar neck because that's going to be important it's going to sit back here um, the guitar neck is actually going to extend a tad over into the license plate so if i cut this i don't need to worry about cutting the plate when it sits here there's a lot going on here but you really need to do your layout ahead of time um, you'll notice that i also have the box marked as to where i need to cut the neck down into you see that there and the back this time, I'm not going to cut anything. So when I turn this over, that neck that we just saw will sit right down in this area. And the tail piece will bolt. I'm going to run some long, long leg screws in through the back end of this and mounting this tail piece. And that will help stabilize the neck that you see inside the box right here. Now, I like this glue bot because you can tell the way the spout is on it, it just lays out a nice little seam there that you can, when you start getting around to where it's thinner, you can control the flow by how much you push on it. It lays out a nice bead all the way around, almost like a caulking tube. I really like these things and you'll find that they're easy to use and they keep your glue in good shape. I don't keep my glue inside the house when it's, or excuse me, in the shed, when it's really, really cold because it ruins the glue. But then I can just put this on here a little bit and move it around and see how those slots for the potentiometers line up. Now, there's going to be some parting lines and stuff to take off, but I'll worry about that once this is all 
um, glued up. Now, I've noticed that this stuff doesn't come oiled up and, and all that because I'm going to use some paint on this and I'm actually going to use automobile paint. This is a GMC product, Aztec Gold Metallic. And you'll figure out what this is all about in the end. But anyway, we're going to go back to gluing this up. You don't need to see me applying glue, but you get the idea. Invest in glue bots. They come in different sizes, large and small. And they're really handy for doing this kind of stuff. It just lays on there just like that. Make sure we didn't miss anywhere. Put the next layer on. Oops, wrong layer. Pay attention. Pay attention. There we go. All right. Okay, these bodies will tend to warp a little bit if you storm in the wrong place. Again, if your shed is extremely hot and then extremely cold, expect that things are going to move around a little bit. When you start putting the clamps on, Put the first couple on a little loose and then you can see I'm having to move this one around a little bit. Keep this rag here so you can see what the seams are doing. Right there like so. There's always going to be a little bit of work to do on these things when it comes to sanding. So yeah, we're just going to go along and be patient when you're clamping these things together for the first time. Again, any mistakes that you've made in storing them, they're just like an old arch top. If you don't pay attention, leave it in the case, strung up, you come out, the neck is broken off, or the pickup has gassed off and melted all over anything. This is the same kind of stuff. Some stuff is not meant to be stored in an environment that's Alaska one day and Arizona the next. So. I'm just going to be patient on this and along. get everything lined up and then in the end we will put a couple more clamps on once we're done. All right, there we go. Before I put the other clamps on, I'm going to take a, a damp cloth and get any bleed off that I've got going on or glue that has shown up in the wrong place out of the way. That will make sanding this on a belt sander much easier. All right, there we go. You just want to make sure that when you're done, you go back around all your clamps and tighten them up because things start flexing and leveling out once the glue starts setting in. There you go, we're good. Let this dry for a day. Put the neck up on top of it. And let's watch glue dry. How exciting. All right, guys, we are back in the rack. Um, we're starting to piece things together now and measure things out. And this is starting to get really complicated. We are going to be focusing on this area right here now. A couple things I wanted to point out. Let's zoom back up here. This neck, when we measured it out for scale, put this behind the knot. 12th fret is right there. This ends up being right there. I put a mark on the ruler and then that way I can take it down here. Let's move this around now. And uh, yeah, my cameraman is me. There we go. Um, this is showing that this would be all the way up here. I don't want that. I've measured it out and you can see that there's a mark right there. So there's also a gap right here that I don't want. So we're going to move the neck down this way some. Um, but again, there's a couple measurements. This is a pretty thick foil pickup. It's going to match this paint. We're going to use pretty well. I've used these on a couple of uh, license plate guitars. It requires the thickness requires that you get it up off the deck quite a bit, which means your neck's got to come up accordingly. But when I put my straight edge across the frets, we can see that it's above there enough to um, 
clear the pickup. Now when it comes time to put this bridge on, it's a little bit different story. Uh, we're not going to be using the lower part of the bridge as usual when we do these license plate guitars. It's not up that high. So we're going to end up putting the screws underneath the thumb screws going through the plate and a piece of wood down there. So one of the considerations is that right there has got to come up considerably like so. So we've got to think about that measurement. And then let me get the straight edge out of the way here. Um, we'll pull this pick up off. Now, pull the plate off, get everything out of the way. You can see that that heel board that we put on the neck, um, going down to the, the neck right there, and ran it through here all the way over to here and it's going to go to the back of the box inside it's not going to exit through we're not going to have a tail piece sticking out back here and then what's going to happen is this is going to sit back here and this is about at the height where this block of wood will accept the screws from here and we'll do our grounding and everything through here like we normally would but this has to be uh, it's pretty big the bridge has to be away from it a bit you see there and everything has got to line up where we when we pull the neck here we're going to have to cut off a corresponding amount back here so there's a lot of measuring to do and if you don't get it right believe me you'll be crying and you won't need an onion to do it now we want to remember that this kit has a hole here and a hole here i will countersink those holes to put a screw in here because the screw can't stick up because the license plate rides here like so. Um, we will put our plate holders here so I'll be marking those. I could just go ahead and do that now. I want to line this up a little bit and kind of give myself some idea. That's a little bit off there. What that's going to look like there and remember we use those t-nuts that drop down in here and that way everything screws in and stays that way and never comes loose anyway so now i got to figure out how we're going to move this down and i've calculated that by measuring everything and getting it together that i'm going to need to move or cut a groove in the neck that much here because can we see this yeah I think so right here at the edge of this I want to leave from here to here so I can bolt the plate down or screw the screw uh, the neck board down and this is going to slip up over here and this part here will now be here and that fingerboard will extend just a little bit and it will actually hide where this seam is right here. I want that. It'll stick over a little bit without touching it. Anyway, what that's going to involve is that I pull this neck out. And we can do that here. Get this clamp off of here. And we'll pull the neck out. I'll show you what that looks like. See, that just drops down. We just pull this out. So once this is done, we'll always be able to pull the neck out. But what I've done is I've marked on the neck right there where the top of this needs to be. And then I'm going to cut a groove in the neck corresponding to that distance. I need to set everything back, which is from here to here. And that thickness of that groove in the neck I hope you're sticking with me right here starting there needs to be the thickness of this right here so I'm going to take my slide rule and I'm going to measure how thick that is and I'm going to mark that off 
this line down. We'll cut a groove in right here and then this will slip in which will cause us to have to cut this off the corresponding amount of this to this. So let's have a look at what that's going to look like. So I've measured the setback on the box which is there. I've taken this and measured it to here which means it's going to end right there. Let me see if I can do this without dropping everything. Now I'm going to take this. I'm going to hold this here and slide. Get rid of this pencil. This has got to be right. Slide that down to the bottom where it's flush. Like so. And then my groove in the neck will have to be Going from this line here to here. That much. So we're going to end up taking this out like so. And we're going to use a flat saw to do that. Okay, a couple things here. Since this neck is fretted already, I have a softener here. A little piece of wood that stops uh, everything from clamping down on a single fret or something. Warping everything or getting anything out of line. I know where the depth of my cut is from this piece of tape. I have to go down to here and I, this piece between here and here will slip down like so. Let me see if I set this up right and it will drop down right to that mark right there. Perfect. All right, moment of truth. Now, I've got some things marked off here. Um, let me grab my pointer so you can see it on the dark wood. Um, the tailpiece up here, I have measured and found the center point here, both front and back. I have tape on this so I can mark this off because now, when I slide the body, said body, over the neck. I'm going to tilt it forward just a little bit like this to clear the back because we're going to have to cut some of the neck off here. So I'm slipping it, I'm tilting it forward just a little bit and now remember those marks that we had right there? I didn't want to get this too close because then this will snap off but right there's our marks and what do you know they line up right down there. Now come back up here. I'm going to take the center mark, line it up with the center mark up here like so. Hold that tight and then I'm going to go to the back and I'm going to make a mark on the tape. And it is right there like so right here I'll have to take a square mark this off like so across here and I'll take this to my chop saw and that will fit right up against this pocket 
right here. Now I'm going to put a piece of blocking in here and glue all this up. And then again, that tail piece will mount right here, center of the box. All right, I think I've got everything set up. We'll put the neck in. I've cut the end off like I said I would. Um, we're going to flip this over so we can see the end result because we're going to be looking at the bottom. So we're going to slip this in right here. And you see now that this slides right over there like so, like we said. And then on the back, it butts up against the end of the box. Now, these are built to accept a typical piece of neck wood that would be used for a, a three or four string cigar box guitar, typically. And we're just going to pop that piece down into that pocket right there like that. And then we'll mark it here, mark it here, cut it off and cut it off there because we want to block that in. We don't want this gap sitting here. We want that to be nice and solid because this is going to bolt on the end of that. So let's flip this thing over and see what we did. Yeah, so we can see this here hides everything. Oh, I did. I did. If you do make a mistake down in here, I did an episode called Pocket Protector. You want to take a look at that right up there, right about now. And it hides any terrible mistakes you've made here. But now, if we line everything up, we're good there. This gives us enough beef to, again, we're going to countersink that. And this and bolt everything up. This will go here. We've got our to the 12th fret, which puts us that. Look at that. We're right on our line where we had it marked off. And that will give us room to put our bridge right here and um, still be out of the way. And then, of course, we've got our pick up going right up there and we've got plenty of clearance all right this was a tricky part this is the first string six string i've done uh, and so that's why i document the layout of it and of course now i'm going to make sure that i make templates for everything and i will see you at the next step okay guys let's catch up we've got a lot done that you can't see isn't that great we put a lot of work into things now this neck slides over the box right there now i've attached this box rather than putting screws here there's a place to put screws here what i've done is i have used t-nuts and we've seen these before you take a forstner bit you drop down a little bit there like so you drill the center of that hole out like so and then you put one of these in and notice that that drops down below flush and then we put some chick flick teal screws in put that there and then what that allows you to do is that is what's under here so I have a, a bolt running down in there on both sides and instead of a screw and what that does for us is it gives us a good way like this I can even put a little bit of Loctite on there but like so a screw is going to work loose after a while these will not and what you can't see here is this setup here is what's underneath here and of course again countersinking it with the Forstner bit allows you to put the screws in where they're not sticking up and so ultimately what happens here you've seen me do this before on license plate guitars is you put one in each one 
Again, you can see where I've taken the Forstner bit, then drilled the center out, and then put three holes in, and ended up with this. And then when I put this on here, like so, I simply put the bolt in, like this, and put a washer on it, and it works just like you're putting a license plate on a car. And that will never go anywhere. And I always want to make sure that I get that pointed to the front, because if it's off just a little bit, I'm going to need some therapy and all that kind of stuff. But looking at it from the bottom, you can see that there's a hole there, and of course the T-nut is above that. Nice and clean, never comes loose. On to other exciting things like wiring and sound. All right, guys, we are done drilling holes in the body where everything goes, marking off where the corner protectors go. We've got the bottom on. We've even drilled out where the corner protector holes are supposed to be. We put the back on, make sure that everything is going to catch paint right here, sanded everything down. And so now we are going to put a coat of paint on this after we mask off this part here where I've darkened this out. So there will be a nice contrast against the plate. Okay, everything is masked off. We've got holes countersunk, everything sanded. I don't want to be messing with this too much after the paint goes on. We should be able to just mount things. Uh, here's that Aztec Gold Metallic. That is a GM product from, let's say, the 70s. I'm not sure it's 72. That might have been something, uh, the year that something happened or is significant somehow in Mississippi. I'm not sure. And maybe this has something to do with the factory color of this. This certainly isn't Catalina Island, that's for sure. All right, we've got a set of fender inline tuners here, and let me grab the pointer. And the bottom and top one have holes at the end, and then the other tuners share a hole in between. Um, it's the first time I've put a pair of these set of these inline tuners in. The buttons, the tuning buttons, are like butter beans. And so that makes them smaller. We'll find out how easy or hard it is to put strings on and how they wind up. But that's what we're up to here. All right, there we go. That turned out pretty good, I think. Looks good. Um, I have... Como is right there. That might give us a hint. These all seem to work pretty good. These have the hole that you just drop the string into and then wind them up. There's a truss rod here. And we need to make a cover out of some metal. Oh, check that out. Yeah, that's a Stuckey's, Rossville, Tennessee, Lake Como. Ooh, there's somebody's signature. Check that out. Um, now it's just basically taking this box. Have you seen this since I showed you the paint? Look at that. That's that Aztec gold color. I've painted the back. There's going to be a graphic here. And then there's going to be a document right here that I think is you're going to find pretty cool. But again, this here get some stuff out of the way here just slips in just like so put our neck there maybe scoop this around if I have to a little bit there we go and this 
sits right there. Got some more detail work to do. Of course, we already put the bridge on. All the holes are drilled. I have a or a tailpiece a floating bridge to put on here, and then we got a pick up here and some wiring to do. And this thing will be ready to rock and roll. But I don't do no rock and roll, right? All right, we are going to start wiring this up. We got our pin and jack. We got our potentiometer. We got our pickup. We have our different colors of shrink rack wrap. I am a firm believer in shrink wrap. We've got our wire strippers. We have our file. We have our wet sponge. And we have, most importantly, our pushback wire. So we're just going to go along here and do a few of these. This little short one will go here on here. That's the hot wire. If I can see, we'll bend that back. Before I start soldering this up, I got this pinkish piece of shrink wrap. So once I've got this done, I'll just push that over that, and then that will separate these. I do a lot of that. So um, you always want to keep your soldering iron clean, and that starts off with filing it like so. And if you put it on a wet sponge between your connections, it'll clean right up just like that. So let's get to work. Okay, let's catch up. We have strings on. We have the truss rod cover, which we made with this secret little pattern that you will not covet. That's my triangular pattern there. Uh, we took a piece of scrap metal. We cut the truss rod cover out. We put some chick flick teal on said truss rod cover and then spackled it up with some different colors and then ground through it to give us that effect right there. Um, the matchbooks are what they are. Let's take a look at the body now and the bridge and all that. All right, we've got the chrome tailpiece. We've got this ebony bridge. I took one of these. This is good stuff. Really hard wood. I cut this down a little bit, get string height right, positioned it with my intonation marker to make sure that it is at the right scale, which is again double the distance between the back of the nut to the 12th fret and then we measure from the 12th fret and mark that distance here. I have also taken uh, the license plate uh, bolts here and I have used the same color of body paint that we've got here and then I speckled with a couple of spots of chick flick teal from a can of paint that wasn't shaken very well and that technique was on purpose because face it we do not want 
these license plate bolts to look like worms first day. What does that mean? Well, you'd have to understand what this means in order to understand what that means. Okay, now is the time to pay attention because you're going to learn a ton. We have taken this gold foil pickup. This looks like something vintage out of the 50s. We have carefully placed it in relationship to the neck, the height of the fretboard, all that kind of thing. We have drilled holes in here to receive the pickup and the wire comes from underneath the pickup so we've drilled a hole right there. We're also going to put a little bit of tape there so that little hole, did you see it? Right there doesn't wear and scratch through and the coating goes through and short out the pickup but we're going to set this on there and we're going to use nylon, nylon insert or uh, aviation nuts so they never back off so it's going to be just as simple right well wrong there's something to consider let's think about something get your thinking cap on it's time to use your brain that so you want to put on your cerebral cortex temporal lobe hat that will help you out you're going to need it on this one son never use your guitar for a table unless i tell you to okay there we go let's say that i have a humbucker pickup you've seen me use these before on cigar boxes and and coffee cans and what else but anyway this is a thin profile humbucker let's say that i have a Hudson Terraplane license plate from this year or maybe from this year or maybe from this year or even maybe from this year hey coveter get away from me okay I'm going to taunt you a little bit but we take our humbucker and we what do you know it sticks to it because it's metal it sticks to that one Oh, sticks to that one, sticks to that one, and even, what do you know, that one. So what does all this mean? Well, it means that if this humbucker is touching metal, that it kind of turns whatever metal it's touching in to a giant pickup. And furthermore, that giant pickup takes on qualities such as say a piezo wood now y'all know that I sometimes put two jacks on my guitars one goes to a piezo which is mounted generally underneath here somewhere and one to a coil you hook those piezos up because they have different volume controls the different amps and it will give you sounds like dragging your slide up and down the fingerboard you'll hear that the fretboard and, and it gives you this rustic sound so what does all that mean to this guitar well it means that it's time to use your head now especially the motor cortex or the pre-motor cortex depending on where you're at so that means that if this sticks to this plate magnetically when i turn everything on it's going to turn this whole plate into a pickup do you believe me? Well, here we go. Listen. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Oh, that sounds good. But listen. You hear that? This whole thing is turned in to a pickup, this whole license plate. Sometimes I want that. Sometimes I don't. And calculating out the height of where I need to put the fingerboard here, the fretboard, you see there's way way low right there them strings are way low and i don't know that it reduces the frequency of or the power of the pickup by turning this whole thing in here um, but i do know that distortion comes on really easy you get near uh, uh, a uh, your amp and it starts squealing so how do you fix that well really simple i took a patron box i traced this out I figured out where the holes were, including one for the wire, and I just slipped that there, like so. 
underneath there. I don't want to crimp that wire again if you're going to scrape that wire against that license plate. That brings our action up to where it needs to be. You see that? And suddenly that piezo effect is gone. Voila. You're like, why didn't you tell me this five years ago? Well, I was here. Where were you, late subscriber? That's what you get for doubting me. You gotta have faith. That's right. All right, we got a volume knob on, and there we go. All right, let's get this thing flipped over, get the back on, and get the final details on. We got a little relic wood to put on to make this special. Okay, the 12th fret is right here. So what I like to do is if I'm going to put a coin or something, I like to put uh, it right where somebody can feel where they're hitting the 12th fret. That one, they slide down, they get to the 14th, but their thumb will sit right there. So I'm going to take, my again, my triangle pattern here. I'm going to center that up on the neck like so. And that 12th fret is right there so we're going to go right on the edge and we're going to make sure that that top one is in the center like so and then we're just going to take our awl and we're going to put it in there like that make a little hole there a little hole there and one right there there we go one two three now we're going to take a quarter inch hole cutter and we are going to go down on each one of those. See, it's got that little nub on the end to get you started. You really want to do that all part first. And then we're just going to go down to the top there. So those holes are like so. And notice we're going to align with the curvature of the neck. We're not going to try to go in sideways. We're going to go in where the neck is curved. And now we got those three holes there. That is not going to bust the neck. Don't worry about it. And now I can take a little bit of fine grade sandpaper and knock those edges down. Now, I'm going to need plugs. And I'm going to use relic wood that's going to come from a place that you're going to cut it. Now, some people have seen me cut plugs with a plug cutter like this and typically we cut them out of wood like this so a slab of wood like this you'll notice that I use these to reinforce the neck to put up on the scarf joint up here let's move up here sometimes I'll put uh, pins that pin the neck perpendicular uh, where I've got joints here as well uh, but here we're going to take a plug cutter and the wood that I have is not in this configuration, but it's twigs. So I'm going to show you a little trick now. Okay, so the first thing we want to remember is we used a quarter inch hole. We made a quarter inch hole and the plug cutter, these fit in to each other just like this. So I'm going to use this to cut wood out of these twigs. Now, first thing we want to do is we want to use a size of twig that we're going to be able to use a cutter. Instead of going down this way, we're going to run axially along the axis. So I'm going to pick out twigs that are about the right size, a little bit bigger, and then I'm going to take the end and run it on a belt sander and round it off just a little bit to where this plug cutter will fit just right over it. Then what ends up happening is I rotate this backwards. I put it in a vise like so. And I want to turn the drill on backwards. I don't want to run the drill forward because it will dig in. So I want to set my clutch really low and I want to make sure that it's running backwards. See that's running backwards. Then I slip it over the top and very slowly again going backwards. If you go forwards it's going to dig in. 
but I run down like this and it's going to make me a perfect plug out of a twig. Sometimes this wood is hard to run across. I take my flush cut saw and I cut it there like that. And then we're going to take our sandpaper and we're going to do that. And then we're going to cut three of them that way and get them in the guitar. All right, there we go. Fits right in. I'm going to use some CA thin set glue because it dries clear. I want to be careful with that and not get too much around, but it sands off well and it will sit that in there forever. I don't want that falling off. Now I want you to notice that I have taken binding tape and put it around because once I cut these off, I'm going to need to file them a little bit and I want to make sure that when I'm sawing them off and filing that I don't get into my neck. So see, I can do this here and as long as I stay on top of the tape and don't cut through, everything will be fine. I can give this a quick final squirt of the varnish that I used and uh, it'll be good to go. Now the nice thing about this glue is it's got nice capillary action and so you just touch the tip there and it runs down in. Okay, now we have a special amulet that's going to go in here, if I can read it. There we go. And we're going to use our Duco cement. I like Duco cement for gluing coins and stuff. And of course, I took a Forstner bit and put this in here. This Duco cement bonds a lot of different things. It dries kind of slow, um, so you got to give it enough working time. Um, but especially on stuff that has gaps in it like this where you can see air through, um, this is good stuff. So I want to make sure that this lines up here like so. Alright. Line up everything like that. And then we're going to take a big piece of masking tape once we know everything lined up just right and we'll make sure it doesn't shift and we're just gonna do that. It'll be time to put the back on after let's move the camera over here a little bit. We're gonna take these wires here and make sure that they got a little harness around them. So nothing is getting in the way and we'll just take some of this red wire here, pick our nippers, cut a piece like that and bundle all this stuff up. Like so. Nothing wiggles around, everything stays good and we do our trim of our Mississippi map goes on the back and seal it off with my little sticker. All right, it's done. Y'all stay back. Don't bum rush me. But here it is. I'm going to set it up on the bench and we're going to go through this and I'm going to show you the details up close and personal and then I'll close this out and leave you Try to get some medical attention for being completely and utterly dismayed. Let's have a close look now. Alrighty, let's start at the back and on the bottom. You got a map of Mississippi here. Of course, we put corner protectors on. We got them chick flick teal screws on there. Of course, we got that grease right there in case your plane gets rusty. But map Mississippi, you got Como and Sardis over in this area, Holly Springs. Uh, Potts Camp where Kenny Brown and them people play. This is all North Mississippi. I like that there. 
Of course, I had to put one of my stickers on right there. Um, moving up, we put a heel board on the neck. Um, we adorned it with this special amulet uh, that uh, the person who this guitar was built for um, did a lot of history and found out um, that this person that uh, this blues musician belonged to this group here. And uh, these pieces of wood right here, this triangle came, but it's just camera right there, came from a place where George Mitchell was looking for a certain person who he was talking to at, this, at that time but didn't realize it. We come up to the neck up here. I put a pair of fender, set of fender in lines. Tammy signed it, of course, but that's the back. All right, the front's just a tad more exciting. Let's do the rundown, starting up at the headstock. You got Como and Sardis up here. We got a truss rod below that truss rod cover. Um, there's somebody's signature on that off of a historic deed. There's a Stucky, y'all. Stuckies, y'all might know about right there outside of Como. What do you know, Lake Como? And then there is a matchbook from Rossville, Tennessee. You might want to find out who was born there. Anyway, we got a gold foil pickup. Remember, we put a spacer behind it so it didn't turn the whole plate into a pickup. You got an emblem off of a early 70s model Pontiac Catalina and the Aztec gold is the body color that's correct to that. Um, we put a nice tail piece on there. The idea is the chrome maybe matches the bumper and the trim on that car, but uh, it's got a floating bridge. This is the first six string license plate guitar I built and I'm pretty happy with it. So there you go. great if I knew how to play this thing. Anyway, this is going back to Mississippi, right where this license plate came from. We're going to send it to somebody down there that's an awesome guitar player, uh, knows the Fred McDowell catalog, and he's going to do impressive things with this that none of us can. Do you know who this person is? You don't? Well, you're going to, because uh, don't tell me you're one of the people right now that goes, uh, who's Apple? Does Apple make something besides Granny Smith pies? I don't know. Anyway, we're going to follow up on whatever happened to this guitar, and you'll see. Anyway, don't forget, give me a like. I'm going to give you a link below to find uh, this guy's music and uh, see what you can do. He's got a CD out to get rid of some of that money you got in your pocket and help uh, the people out who help me. So... Give me a like below, subscribe if you haven't, and I'd like to see your comments on this guitar. See you next time.